Who have we got here? Ahsanullah. Ahsanullah. Let me assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing, Ahsanullah? I'm doing, uh, I'm doing well. I'm trying to feed this uh, this guy over here. <laughs> I'm just giving him a peanut butter sandwich, but he won't have it. <laughs> How's everything? Um, How are you doing? Things are good, Lila. Alhamdulillah, be praised, man. Things are good. Things are good. Your family, so, your children. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, all good, all good. People, you know, blissful, blissful. Yeah, so, well, any thoughts, any questions, something you'd like to share with us? Uh, any thoughts? Um, I was going through this is more of a, I guess, in the, psycholo in the psychology realm of things. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of reflecting on antidepressants a little bit. And, um, you know, kind of just looking at the studies about how for people who are dealing with any type of depression, of course, uh, other mental uh you know struggles as well and um i feel like when they think about antidepressants right away they feel sort of like no i shouldn't I, like i i shouldn't do that right in a sense or i shouldn't like, take as in i shouldn't take until yeah like i shouldn't take it like, i'm fine without it and i feel like it's a it's a double-edged sword because sometimes if you get yourself to a stage where you need it and just yeah. to give yourself a fighting chance. Um, but I guess sure. the thoughts where I was going with it was um, for people that do take antidepressants, mm -hmm. I feel like um, the studies have obviously shown that they need to be partnered up with therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I guess what I was reflecting on is why, right? Why? Um, and and mm -hmm. this, this sort of image was playing in my head where I was thinking of our emotions. Like naturally, uh, if we get a headache, we take medication for a headache, a Tylenol, whatever we take, and basically mm -hmm. to stop the signal. But the headache exists, right? So then I, I, I thought, okay, well, if we're taking antidepressants for a person who's depressed, mm -hmm. he feels an emotion that brings him sadness. However, that sure. sadness emotion is now muted by the antidepressant. Right, so yeah. mm -hmm. this person doesn't actually know that they are now sad because their emotion is muted. So then let's say this emotion now is in a room, right? Yeah. This emotion is in a room. Mm -hmm. The longer you're on antidepressants, that room starts filling up. Mm -hmm. And naturally they will increase dosages. Eventually you reach a high level, you're gonna have to switch over. And we've seen a lot of unfortunate suicide rates go up between people switching medication. Um, they yeah. feel so muted that they feel like, I don't even feel happiness or sadness. I'd rather feel something. Because just mm. at one point, you're just walking and yeah. you're not feeling any emotion. So then they get out. The, here's, here's why I'm like reflecting on this. I'm trying to understand why people get off medication and they have... I'm sure you've seen the stories of people, unfortunately, committing suicide or doing harm to themselves at the yeah. stage of they got off medication. So I'm sitting here okay. thinking, I wonder if by muting the emotions, the sadness goes into a room and then you're off that medication, that room just bursts out and you have just a room filled with just depressive emotions shooting mm -hmm. out all at once. Wow. So now I'm sitting there thinking, okay, so maybe that is why we have to still do a form of therapy, a form of treatment. So for the people who struggle and the people who are on any type of antidepressant that kind of mutes emotions, yeah. somehow having that cognition, somehow still thinking about, you know, I still need to go take a walk, go experience nature because you mm -hmm. have to open that door that you don't know exists. Yeah, so and it's very similar to when we feel angry, right? I'm sorry, this is my last thought because I no, would love no, no, no. to hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. If we're angry, they say, you know, go for a walk. If you're sit, stand. If you're standing, I mean, you just kind of switch mm -hmm. things up a little bit. Yeah. Because you need to release that emotion. By yeah. having that depressive emotion not being taken care of, 
And the medication is there to kind of give you a fighting chance, but it's not the solution. Sure. So it's one of those things like could these are just my thoughts. I'm just kind of that's what my no, mind. No, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. No, absolutely. Right, right. I mean, you see, <clears throat> so here, here's my thoughts on this. Sure. You see, psychiatry. The problem with psychiatry is it's not curative. Okay, it's not so. So, for example, let's um, you somebody's got an infection, and now you take some antibiotics, and it kills the infection, and it boosts your you know boosts your immune system, allows you to kind of. And you get better. You, it's you. You're actually kind of cured from the infection you had. Right. In psychiatry, that doesn't. The brain doesn't operate in that same way. Or we're not actually psychiatry isn't actually as advanced as the rest of biological kind of um, chemistry that we're aware of is. So what they do is, it's like they fill kind of gaps, so to speak. OK, so it's like an artificial supply of something or whether you're going to. So let's say somebody's got depression. Obviously, I'm not even talking about antipsychotics and stuff, but even depression, which you spoke of, which many people may be a may fall victim to. Now, whether they're going to give you this diverse methods, but let's say they're going to give SSRIs or different things, they do work. They work, but they're not curative because they're not actually curing the problem. But they are kind of just thick. It's kind of like a plaster or like a Band-Aid, as you say. So which is just kind of stopping it from just pouring out. So you let's say a person's serotonin levels are not as high. So what they're doing is allowing them to take greater advantage of the supply that they have by using these things. Now, okay, that's fine. Let's say a person needs that because if they're not going to have that, then they may be absolutely debilitated and life may be totally unbearable and maybe they're going to do something terrible. So, okay, we understand that. But what are the the natural or the actual are there any curative steps to actually help strengthen this person's actual organic system? So can they themselves do something? So when you said things like take a walk or do these things, these things naturally do boost your own uh, your own kind of systems that you've got within. They improve your overall health. They lift your mood. Uh, even therapy, therapy does that. So even talking with people. And another thing I don't, I tell you what I uh, don't like, this is me now, and I could, this is my personal perspective, is this curative side. You see, psychiatry, and even, and this by extension is greater than psychiatry now, this is the whole kind of uh, pharmacology. Um, uh, you see, it has, it is so built on, and, and it does a wonderful job in so many things. I'm not knocking. That. Of course. No, no, I, but it's I, I, so I built on, but it's so built on chemicals that they refuse to even factor in other natural things. So they, the, the, the doctors will just not say it because it's not part of their mind. So, for example, tryptophan is an amino acid that um, it will be converted by the one it will be converted carried into the brain and then used either for uh serotonin or it could be uh, converted to other transmit neurotransmitters if they're lacking tryptophan where i know people could take 5 htp for example i'm not recommending that because that just crosses immediately the blood brain barrier and it will get converted to serotonin but the problem is that you could kind of cause an imbalance Whereas you take an amino acid like tryptophan, which is in things like milk as well, but you can mm -hmm. buy the amino acid. This is a natural amino acid. Uh, people have it in products. People can buy it as a supplement. Now, it would uh, it would aid your mood because it's a natural thing that because tryptophan is eventually converted, which is then converted into serotonin. Now, I'm not saying this is a solution, but this is one 
ingredient amongst many ingredients. It could, could be. It could be like I, I would take tryptophan. I mean, I, I don't always take it, but I do take it. So, you see, now the the pharmaceutical or the pharmacological kind of industry, so to speak, would not take this route at all because it doesn't think according to these usul. Like its usul is more about hmm, uh, what chemical. And what kind of drugs, the uh, pharmaceutical drugs, of course. No, of course. Uh, that we, so, so for example, they wouldn't. And I'm not saying this is the answer, but I give you an example. So, let's say I was once speaking to uh, a friend of mine, a doctor, talking about something, and I said, "Well, um, what about let's just say in a certain thing? Uh, this is not about the brain now. I'm talking about just general health." And I said, "Well, what about things like let's say." Um, zinc and vitamin c and these things and if you're to boost the immune system the person would and and the doctor said well no because why would you give vitamin c if they don't have vitamin c deficiency or a zinc deficiency you see now that's a different usul by which you're thinking like it's been so institutionalized that you only think in deficiencies whereas really there's, there's so many things that could boost a person's their own immune system, which right. then, um, obviously, I'm not talking about ridiculous kind of measures. I'm no, I, I get where you're generally. going. Yeah. There's a methodology by which, you see, when a person goes through so much institutionalization, they have to think. Well, And even if doctors don't think like that, they would have to think like that because they can't prescribe things that are out of the box. Otherwise, they'd get, in, they'd get into trouble themselves. So... And the problem with psychiatry is it's worse than the rest of the whole medical kind of faculty. It's like when I say worst, least developed, uh, because we just because the brain is just incredibly complex that they haven't right. they, they haven't actually produced so much. Like if you think about it, I went to a lecture um, a few years back where the professor was speaking <coughs> and he was contrasting <coughs> branches like oncology with psychiatry. And they were saying, well, you know, let's say in the 1950s, a person had cancer, they were pretty much dead. And a person has cancer now, they have a very good chance of, or let's say even 60s, and they have a very good chance of survival, depending on what cancer is, of course. But now, he said, but you could take something like schizophrenia. You could take something like, you know, now what they call dissociative identity disorder you could take something like bipolar or you could take something like this there's, there's still really nothing that i mean all you do is you know you might give a person a certain amount of valium or a certain amount of something and you're kind of just sedating them and you're kind of certain antipsychotics that suppress certain modalities within the brain so i guess not, that's where i was going you know i feel yeah, like but it's with not all actually solving curing. Right. Yeah, so I feel like solving. there's so many people in this field that I'm coming across that are on a type or a form of antidepressant, but they're not in actively engaged in therapy. And that's a that's a very big problem in this world, in this field, because it's 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 one of those things where someone's taking creatine, hoping to build muscle, uh, but not going to the gym. It's one of those mm -hmm. things where, like, okay, so you did something, but there's a significant step missing. And mm -hmm. I feel like by taking an antidepressant, you are taking a step. See, I'm not trying to downplay yeah. it. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely taking a step. But the dangers of muting an emotion, but the emotion is still happening within you. It's just going into a closet and you didn't even know that closet existed. You think you're not even feeling a depressive emotion. However, you are and it's inside you. And the moment you're off these antidepressants, these will shoot out all at once. I, I have known people who have been on antidepressants and when the, and they came off them and they were um, they were fine and they did manage to, you know, they, their life is on track from what I'm aware of. That With said, or without I, therapy, I'm sorry. You see, I, I, I'm not so sure. I don't... Because... Because I have not followed their lives that closely. Sure. Okay. But I, you see, but I am, as a person, I'm very scared of things like antidepressants. And uh, and I'm not trying to say that these things are not helpful. I think they are. And wherever, if it helps someone and it will make a difference, then alhamdulillah. But I 
would always advocate that if they are going to take it, then like you're saying, I would always advocate that the human side, because we have within us certain mechanisms that will kind of, so to speak, reboot themselves. We will, you know, like you said, like nature, like you said, go for a walk. Uh, it sounds so cliche, it, but the, like the, somebody the, could the, say, well, the, the what, what happens in a walk? But it makes it makes a huge difference. Going for walks is an immensely therapeutic uh, process. You know, just in the company of friends, laughter. I mean, there's things that you see. What and <laughs> this is what I meant when I was saying earlier on. It's not that some things in it's not that modern science doesn't recognize this. It does recognize that, look, so for example, laughter, you know, it boosts endorphins and encephalins and it boosts these kind of things and you have a, a greater kind of, you're more healthier, you have a healthier immune system, you kind of, it's not that it doesn't recognize this, but in the kind of mass industrialized world that we live in, it's kind of very cold, polite, but cold. And it's kind of, a machinery it's kind of just mass it it's produced so it doesn't really have time for this kind of talk about like oh well you know you should laugh more often or you should it's not like to them it's about you yeah, take this pill three times a day take it after this now off you go i've only got 10 minutes now i've got to talk to the next patient now it's right. this is how this is how it's this is how it, it is. It, it it's becomes, like these it, kind of battery it, farms. It becomes a like a like just a transaction. Have you heard of um I believe I believe he's in Australia. I'm not sure. Uh but his name is Dr. Uh Yabko. Um Michael Yabko and he um Oh yes, yes, it's on depression. On depression. And yes, I, I shared was, a, a clip of his once on Instagram. You did. Yeah. And you yes. introduced me to him. That's right. I was like, I was wondering why I know him. I could have, there was a link. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead Amazing. and actually, yes, did you end up talk, watching yeah. that whole lecture or did you catch yeah, a I snippet? Yeah, I did. No, I did. No, I shared a small snippet because I could only share a small snippet. Epic. But I loved his lecture. It right. Really and, that, and so I'm going through his book now on the okay. steps of coming out of depression. And it's incredible because kind of what I'm gathering is that if you're not dealing with, with a major depressive state, and what I mean is like um, many of us will deal with um, an environmental depression or a seasonal depression or mm -hmm. maybe different types of moments where we're having a little. If the only time someone should consider, seriously consider, I mean, this according to him, um, medication is if you are in a, in a stage where suicidal thoughts are existing in your life. If you're not dealing with that level of depression, then you have you should feel very encouraged like you should feel motivated that you can absolutely get out of it without having to you know sure. i mean go, yeah go i mean what that. i would yeah i you see what i would oh, okay so here's how this is where i'm at i'm not so much about and i'm sure you're exactly or you're very same but i'm just putting it out there i'm not so much about telling people what to do no, of because course. I think, so it's, to me, I wouldn't do that. And I would say, especially on these issues of mental health, but I would tell me, like, so there's a standard I hold for me that I don't, it's, I, I just don't get involved with it with other people, unless they were very close friends and they were asking my personal kind of opinion. My standard for me is that you, you have to always will yourself out of these things and I, and I personally believe that as this is for me that as human beings we have a willpower that you cannot give up that it does not there is, it is not an option that you see the mind is the ultimate kind of frontier that if you lose it you lose everything right and you know, so, I, I'm, I'm with you I'm definitely not speaking for people I guess so, I, was, I was hoping to be an that, encouragement. Statement. No, I no, I know, no, you are. But I was just clarifying just in case because people are listening. But this is for me as a person, and I'm sure you're doing it, saying it in the same way. Now I get it. Some people may say that look, they are not in that fortunate position to have that willpower and to have, and this is why for them whatever works, do it. Follow the the local kind of medical advice and do all of that. 
but I, in addition to that, I feel it's incredibly important the things we were saying, the human elements, the things like just which which is therapy, like just talking to people, talking nature, these small things, having that kind of. Uh, just having that internal fight that yeah i think in this world and currently we have to ask ourselves a very simple question in is how do i very like individually have fun and do okay. it it's very funny because sometimes we get caught up not having fun anymore and in mm -hmm. a sense where uh, for the extrovert, they'll be around friends. For the introvert, they'll be bird watching. I never understood bird watchers until I realized that they're probably introverts. But <laughs> um, and 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 then the biggest be, there thing, must be some Jessica in it for them. Otherwise, why do they do it? There must be right, some. you know. And that's the as I grew up, I felt like I finally understood the, the beauty in it. Um, and and one of the biggest things in his book and his lectures that you are, I want to share, and I know you want to cross it. I just want I, I do want to share this is is that like, for example, we know everyone back home for the people who have people in, in, in Central Asia or other parts of the world that are struggling. Me, for example, my family in Afghanistan, may Allah make it easier on, on everyone who's struggling, mm -hmm. that when we speak to them, we don't get this energy of depression from them. Mm -hmm. so, so, this, so, so Dr. Yapko was arguing that when people start talking about, well, I'm, like, why are you depressed? And they say, well, let me tell you what happened to me. That in most cases, he obviously didn't say all, but in majority of the cases, it's not what happened to us. It's what we attribute to what happened. To how, we, yeah. what, how are we? It's the meaning. The meaning that we What give meaning it. are we giving that event mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. to interpret it to be what it is? Hundreds, so, for hundreds. example, and then the, the example was very clear. You have two people who both had suffered maybe a sudden death in their family. One person is depressed, one person isn't. Or maybe, that's, sadly, there's so much, so much worse traumas out there. But take the worst mm -hmm. trauma, compare them, someone is depressed, someone isn't. Well, why isn't this person depressed if that is the reason why you're depressed? And the argument yeah. is, well, how did you attribute, what, what meaning did you give that life event? And yeah. dissecting that. Is because what they show that genetic factors, I think he shows in his... In his lecture, he shares, I think, did he say less than 1% or something? He gives it was a, a very, such, very, very like low a number. Zero, four or something. He says percent of were genetic factors, which I was really shocked at, at the time. I thought, oh, okay. The, the, num yeah, what, the number was, it was, was shockingly low, almost like I, I don't believe it low. <laughs> yeah, so uh, and another book that opened my mind on this was really uh, Viktor Frankl's uh, uh, Man's Search for Meaning, because really you know when he that is a book that i really encourage people that if you especially if you're if you're going through any kind of the, like depression or if you know somebody who is it's not a difficult book it's not a big book victor frankl's a uh, man's search for meaning because he was a psychologist who was also caught up in the nazi concentration camps he then he survives the camps and uh, eventually goes on to america referring to... and he kind of treats people and he and the book isn't about his, even though he does give make references to the concentration camps, but it's not like a diary. I mean, it is in some way he's going through incidents, but it's not. It's a, it's it's written. It's well written. It's not like trying to say on this day this happened, this happened, this happened. He's trying to show you that what may what gives people the will to live, and why are they? And this is you know a point I wanted to say when you were saying that when you mentioned Afghanistan and other places and Pakistan and India and, uh, and just other poverty-stricken parts of the world that don't have the luxury of the narrative of depression. Now, you see... because The luxury of the narrative. Of the narrative of so depression. Okay. Because here in this part of the world, what, I, what does freak me out sometimes, <coughs> and I'm more... My concern is for younger people who are growing up around this, is that there is this narrative, a psychosocial narrative in society, which and I'm and it is true, it is a reality as well. There is depression. I'm not denying that, but because this exists as a label, so people throw the towel in because they think, well, oh, well, you know, it's well, 
oh, I've got depression. So, you know, right. just excuse me because I've, I've got this. It's like as if, for example, I've got diabetes now. They're saying, well, you know, I've got this. So it's a lifelong condition. And mind you, people, depending on diabetic stage as well, they can kind of combat it if they change their lifestyles and stuff. But this, this kind of label... I think even though the, the niya behind these labels is noble, that it's to kind of safeguard people. So somebody is dyslexic, for example, well, this is a, a label to help. That, so people could say, oh, well, this person is dyslexic. But what happens sometimes, it kind of clips our wings. Because we think, oh, well, ah, well, you know, I have this narrative. I can't climb out of this. You know, there's a, there's a, I mean, it's a myth, but it's, it's well quoted within the business world that they'll say that, you know, if you get a shark and put it in a tank, it'll only grow to eight inches. And if you put it in the ocean, it'll grow to eight feet. That it's, it, it kind of doesn't outgrow its environment. It's right. kind of own. So the point is that if you, if these people have this, that, oh, I'm, you know what it is? I, oh, I, but this is how I am. The, the thing, do... the thing with that is, is that I, 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 I'm with you side by side. The the society today, I feel, and I always say this to to the people I speak with, have romanticized depression. They have romanticized these terms by sort of, oh, I'm just depressed, or sort of giving it a different flavor. Where I feel like depression is very similar to a physical injury of like, well, I can't mm. come and walk to yeah. you right now because I have a broken leg. Not I have a scratch in my leg or, you know, my, my, my I mean, it's leg. Not to tell, you see, because I'm not doing this to, and I know you ain't either, but I'm not doing this. I'm not saying this kind of, this structure is to downplay the phenomenon. But what I'm saying is, okay, so let me give this example, just so the viewers, it makes sense to them. Something happens in, let's say here, or, 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 where, what city are you, what state are you again? L.A. LA, right? So Allah, city of the angels, huh? <laughs> Los Angeles. So the so let's say in LA something happens, here in the UK something's happening. The general public, I'm not talking about the, the minority tiny Muslim population, general public wouldn't say something happened to somebody, oh, that was the evil eye. Or they won't say, for example, that was a jinn that's causing this. Because they don't have that narrative to resort to. They, and they and they generally, that's not how they see the world. So the just as an example, or let's let's change that, right? Because the 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 jinn thing, well, people would say, well, okay, we but certain Muslims will say they believe in jinn possession or they believe in the let's say superstition. Okay. So somebody had a car accident today, and you say, well, you know, the reason that happened is because um you must have, a, a black cat must have crossed the street before you or you must have walked under a ladder or you know today was the 13th of a month now imagine in a society where people all accepted these things like this was quite communal, common kind of like like a belief it would be very like you couldn't it's not what i'm trying to say is even the the tragedy is real whatever happens but people assign to it these things if with depression, the tragedy, maybe it, it is real, it is real. Obviously, it varies. For some people, it's worse than others. But if they didn't have, like if you put that same person in a different environment with this psychosocial, this luxury narrative didn't exist that totally excused them, what would happen is the person would think, right, something's wrong. They would think something's wrong because I don't feel right. Right. Now, they're going to think, well, I need to fix it. And I get the fact that, you know, you may need medication, you may need therapy, you may need this, but they, it's not a label for life. It's not like a condition. It's not an identity. Like in saying, well, you know, oh, you are this person, and you know, you are clean. Oh, hundred percent, not, not, and, and absolutely. Whereas and the thing is, it does we're become not that in a lot right. of these, in these, in many of these societies, it does become an identity. Well, well I'm just, you know, depressed, or I'm just uh, many of these conditions. I don't mean the full on 
stronger side of mental health with actual psychotic uh, um, you know illnesses I mean on this side the lower end of depression or people having even some some of these other kind of mild learning difficulties that people have some so there was a study in the UK several years back when I was doing my psychology degree where they took a bunch of children that had dyslexia and they worked immensely with them for I think six months and by the end of the six months they no longer had dyslexia now this caused a huge hoo-ha and the dyslexia I've forgotten what, what it was called the dyslexia society in the UK it, it kicked up a huge fuss and I think it wanted the program taken down it was several years back because they said that this is obviously uh, apart from an affront and an offensive and uh, but but it questions a lot of things because look there's a lot of funding that depends on stuff like this as well because you can't because if if you're saying now well according to this study that they did well actually you can cure it then well then there shouldn't be a lifelong set of funding that's allocated for so many people and so many like i'm not saying the program wasn't saying that but it gives rise to other questions as well because there's always power there's always money involved as well that so it's interesting that if there was a certain amount of effort given and dedication and i i get it that not everybody would get that but if there was let's say could a person emerge out of this condition whatever it is like in that program it was dyslexia or whether it's depression or whether it's <coughs> and that's to me the more important question as a person i feel yeah right and i, I the thing is I, i'm with you We're definitely not downplaying it however i do feel like because society has romanticized it and has sort of made it an everyday term society has actually downplayed it so for people who actually do have this this actual yeah, that's depression. That's a very good point. I, li I like that. Because you know, they have this point. actual depression. Yeah. They find themselves in the back burner because mm. now it's like if if they – it's it's one of those things where like before they were already reluctant to even express mm. this, this feeling of depression. But now we're going to add the societies pulling the card of depression left and right. Now it, it doubt like that they find themselves kind of further away from actually trying to find a solution. I guess the biggest thing I want to think what it does. I think what it does, if not to, I hope it's uh, not to misconstrue. It, if anybody's listening, it's not to. But it's like I heard a doctor say, who was actually working with mental health, uh, he, and he was saying that he worked with so, so many people who so desperately need all the help in the world that can be given to them and their resources are so restricted because they can only see this child let's say once a month and really the child but they've got all these other slots taken up by some you know by some kid who's just you know he's got too many video games to play and so now he's just sad because he's crippled by the power <laughs> you know by, the, <laughs> by the, the abundance of choice and he's just like so what you're saying exactly I, that doctor had said to me that you know because of so, so many of these what they see and they can't say it. they said they can't say it because obviously imagine or <laughs> yeah but they said that these are not you know these are just trivial cases they're taking up space for real cases where there's actual serious uh, mental health that needs dedication, but all these slots are just going to just people who... <laughs> See, the, you know, the I... fact that people even t talk about depression as in like, well, just kind of, uh, uh, wh wh why do you want to be sad? Or why do you... It's one of those things that that's what society has unfortunately done because so many people have unfortunately carried the torch of depression that shouldn't be holding the torch in the first place. And then there's so many actual people with depression who are like, no, no, I don't want to feel like this. And sometimes yeah. I think of it like when we no, wake is, up in the it morning. Is, it is we, very, we, honestly, it's very difficult even thinking. There was a, um, because it's the, you see, because people, it's this thing of like you, this inability to snap out 
and just being stuck in this there was a, a movie what was it called actually it was uh, actually that was a very dramatic kind of I, I don't think i watched it i think i just watched a small amount of it years back was it called something like the gobbledygook or something but it's this lady who's going through this immense kind of and it kind of appears as, as though it's kind of like horrific and stuff but but yeah uh, may allah honestly make it easy for people because i think in many ways as well I, I saw this meme today, which said parents saying that I do all this hard work so my kids can have it easy. And then it said kids then have it easy and the parents are like, <laughs> you know, like what the hell's wrong with you? Because, <laughs> because it's true, because we don't know. It's scary, honestly. Like that—that that was your little one, wasn't it? And yeah, yeah. Just feeding the sandwich too. You know, it's scary because you think to yourself that, damn. You know, in many ways, because maybe we had it tough, it gave us a certain resilience. And and I hope and I pray that you know the younger generation have it. I mean, but it's sometimes mm -hmm. scary just seeing because on the same hand you don't want them to go through any difficulty. Damned you if you do, damned to... if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary man honestly <laughs> you know it, it, it's like waking up for a person and we're at the state of zero for our emotional and then we wake up and we'll do something we'll have a cup of coffee and we're improving our mood depressed people wake up with a negative 10 and they fight just to get to the zero and they get to the zero and they didn't have laughter that day so it's such a different for a person who wakes up at a stage of zero will never quite understand what negative 10 feels like on a daily basis. Yeah. And just to that fight so that true. day to get to zero, and some, many times you don't, you end up at negative six, you end up at negative three, only to wake up the next day at negative 10 again. And that's the struggle. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so I, we went on. I'm so sorry. No, man. Um, it's been It's been good speaking to you. It's been a while. We got to catch up. So drop me a message. I'm almost we'll done coaching my season. We went undefeated, alhamdulillah. Okay, it's awesome. my first season coaching girls, and it was the greatest, worst decision I've ever made. <laughs> I love it. Love <laughs> there was no alhamdulillah, and honestly, I learned a lot this season. But season's almost done, we'll be talking soon, inshallah. Cool, man. Take care, man. Take right. care, speak so soon. much love, people. All the way, Ahsanullah Khushkhaki, all the way from LA, the city of the angels, right?